Hello folks, it's Peter Elgar here, the guy with loads of cameras, and I'm back with a loaned one. One of my camera club friends loans me a camera, so I've shown you the Olympus trip he loaned me, and at the same time he loaned me this one. It's a Petri. I'm not certain when it was made, I think in the 1970s. And he got it in a boot sale for £1.50. But it's in very poor shape. It says he cleaned it all up. And this was all damaged here. Bits of it all fallen off. But I've used it. And it gives amazing results. I've never seen anything like it. I've tried to get some information on the exact model. But it just says Petri. It doesn't give you the exact model. And so I'll, I can't find it exactly when it was made, but I think it's 1970s. They made the Petri Flex as well, but this is a compact range finder. So it has a Oricor, what's it called? The um, Oricor, Petri Oricor lens, maximum aperture 2.8, focal length 45 millimeters, which is a slight wide angle. Where the Olympus trip was 40. And um, it's non interchangeable, of course. The socket on here is for your flash. And you can also plug a flash in at the top, but it's, and it doesn't have any electronic things. There's, there's no uh, hot shoe, only a cold shoe. So I plugged my flash into that and I tried it on the top there and it all works with the flash. Now it's a between the lens shutter, of course, so it synchronizes at all the shutter speeds. On the side, you can choose for flash bulbs as well in this one. This is set to X, stands for Xenon tube. And M is for flash bulbs. So you choose that but with a little lever here, you push it across and there, you will find the shutter goes off after the flash starts firing to give it the flash chance to burn up to full power. But if you have it set wrong and you use an electronic flash, you won't get any pictures. It must be on X. Make certain it's on X for your electronic flash. This is the shutter. What's the name of the shutter? A Petri MX shutter, speeded from one second to a three hundredth of a second. Now I've tried it on the brief as well, but as this camera hadn't been used for a long, long time, it was terribly slow to shut after I pressed the release. <laughs> I didn't want to try that anymore. And it's only a loaned camera, but the other speeds do work. So we put it on say half a second, Wind it round and press. Yes, it sounds like half a second, well, slightly longer. Yes, now we'll start on one second. Here we go, I bet you that's longer. One second. Yes, more like two seconds. But the faster speeds are okay. And I've taken most of the pictures I will show you at 300th setting because it was bright sun but I've metered it as if it was actually 200th because they're never accurate. The 300th quick nice click that goes okay. Then the apertures go here on this ring against the little diamond here and you can set the apertures from 2.8 to f22. There's F22 there, and 2.8 is at the other end here. There we are, that's 2.8. So I, I've got pictures to show, which I took at F4. Then you've got a depth of field scale here, which I've explained before in my videos, but if you have it set to F8, say, and you are on the range finder about 10 feet away here, you look where 8 occurs there, and you look where 8 occurs on that side, and it gives you the range of 
acceptably sharp focus for that distance on which you are focused. That is a depth of field scale. There's no delayed action, but uh, on the top you've got other controls here, and I wonder what this was. It doesn't do anything, it's just a reminder to help you remember what film you've got in. I thought, what does that do? It doesn't do anything actually. <laughs> you turn this and you can remind yourself you've got color ASA 100 or color 200 or black and white in. You know, I put it to black and white. So that's just a reminder dull. But here is the frame counter setting and you have to remember to set that after you've loaded the film. Now, there's a rewind crank with a little crank like that and you have to open the back here and it pops open and there's the inside of the camera. So we'll put it on a slower speed and you'll see how the shutter works. We'll put it on the half a second and we've got it on, um, put it on F, F2.8, see if you can see through there. There we are, that's the shutter opening. Make certain, make certain it's wound around properly. Oh now, oh dear, oh dear, the shutter doesn't want to go now. Oh dear, oh dear. Unfortunately, I'm having a bit of trouble there with that shutter. Not that happened before. You see, it, hasn't, it hadn't been used for a long, long time, but it did work when I used it before. And loading the film, put your film in here, as usual. Push down the rewind crank, turn it until you can po poke in some film into a little slot, which revolves round as you wind gently. Poke it into the little slot, complete, complete winding. Now, of course, the shutter isn't going to fire. Oh, it's going now. Yeah, there it goes. Press with your thumb to tighten it. Make certain it's on the cogs. Flip the back over gently. Complete the wind. Take up the slack. Fire. It's working now. Thank God for that. Fire once. Wind it, yes, that's moving, that's correct. And set this, otherwise you won't know how many frames you've taken. So you've got to put that, turn this round to start. And there we are, there's a little minute little index here. And you put it round to, well I'll put it round to number one because you get you find extra frames that way, there we are. You can start firing away. Take your, take your snaps. We'll put it onto a faster speed because it seems to be jamming a bit at the half a second. That's on the 300 setting. That's all going correctly now. And when you picture the taken, you must press in the rewind knob here. And I thought, what's that? indentation because it's not, not for a battery is it? It's a, it? Just the rewind knob and then you can wind it back into your cassette. You don't do it with the back open of course but this is just a test film so we'll show you how the rewind works. There we are. People new to film might be <laughs> might go and do this and fog their pictures. But of course all my watches I hope are all, are all skilled photographers aren't you? You know you don't open the back of your camera until the cassette is fully rewound. The only thing is I've noticed the range finder is not accurate. You look through the window and the range finder spot is there from here but when you turn the focus scale, the actual distance the rangefinder thinks it is, is it's completely wrong. So what I've done, I've just guessed the distance against the little index here, and it will come out all right. 
So I'll show you a few pictures now in its amazingly sharp lens. Now I had trouble with my printer, my Epson printer, and my boy had trouble with his HP printer. So we've only managed to get three to show you. I wanted more, but it, it, it wouldn't print anymore. It wouldn't feed in, so he's trouble with his printer. But there's the sharpness. That stopped down to F8. All the details here are all lovely sharp. You can read everything on it. And then here is one further down the road, and this balloon shot. I'm always using this as a test. You can read the phone number, the Brentwood phone number, and the minute little writing is all resolved. That's just as sharp as a Leica lens. This was on out of date KB200 film, which I processed myself. Here is one which I use as a test church door. And look at the definition of the creeper here. That was between 8 and 11, set to 300th. But as I said, I metered it as if it was 200th. Now here's one where it's faulty printing, but that was a taken F4. Now I had a lady down here, but he didn't size it up correctly. So she's cut out, but the brick wall is all sharp. And that is an F4 on the lens. So that Petri lens is amazingly sharp. It just needs to be used a bit more because as you've seen, there is a slight fault with the delay of the shutter opening and closing. But as I say, it's donkey's years old and probably hadn't been used for years. So it has to be treated gently. L luckily the lens is not scratched but it's just the shutter is jamming up a little bit. But it's not bad for a £1.50, was it? So I hope you've enjoyed this one on the Petri camera of unknown origin. Thanks for watching.